ஸ்ரீ ராகவேந்திரா த செயிண்ட் ஆஃப் மந்த்ராலயா பார்ட் எயிட் ஸ்ரீ ராகவேந்திரா ஹூ கிரேசஸ் ப்ராஸ்பெரிட்டி ஸ்ரீ பகவான் உவாச்ச அபியாச யோகா யுத்தேன சேதச நான்ய காமீனா பரமம் புருஷம் திவ்யம் யதி பார்த்தானு சிந்தையன் தி லார்ட் சே ஹி ஹூ மெடிடேட்ஸ் ஆன் மீ ஆஸ் த சுப்ரீம் பர்சனாலிட்டி ஆஃப் காட் ஹெட் ஹிஸ் மைண்ட் கான்ஸ்டன்ட்லி எங்கேஜ் இன் கண்டம்ப்ளேஷன் ஆஃப் மீ அன்டிவியேட்டட் ஃப்ரம் த பாத் He, O Partha, is sure to reach me. Bhagavad Gita 8.8 Yad Padodaka Sanchayaha Suranadi Mukhyapa Gasadita Sankhyanuttama Punyasanga Vilasat Pratyata Punyavaha Dustapatraya Nashano Bhuvimaha Vandya Suputra Prado Vyangaswanga Samriddhito கிரகமகா பாபாப ஹஸ்தம் ஸ்ரயே ஸ்ரீ ராகவேந்த ஸ்தோத்ர எயிட் வித் ஸ்ரீ ஹரீஸ் ப்ரெசன்ஸ் இன் தோஸ் த அபிஷேக வாட்டர் ஆஃப் ஸ்ரீ குருராஜாஸ் பிருந்தாவனா ஆஸ் ஆல்சோ த ஒன் தட் இஸ் வாஷ்ட் இஸ் ஹோலி ஃபீட் ஆர் ஹோலியர் தேன் த கேன்ஸஸ் தே ஹேவ் த பொட்டென்ஸ் டு பெஸ்டோ இம்மெஷரபிள் மெரிட்ஸ் இஃப் ஃபேஸ் ஆல் சின்ஸ் அண்ட் ரிமூவ் டிஸ்ட்ரெஸஸ் Besides blessing progeny to the barren ones, I worship Sri Raghavendra of such glory. Sri Man Narayana is the saviour, the protector and the creator of everything in the universe. He had sought three paces of land from Mahabali, to acquire which he had assumed his infinite form as Trivikrama, covering the terrestrial world by one foot of his, the celestial ones with another foot. and placing the third one on the head of mahabali himself stomping him to the sutala loka with great force in the very presence of his grandsire prahlada and following him to that loka besides going there he made his appearance later in the same trivikrama roopa at another place as promised to prahlada with the, which gigantic form would have shaken any asura a demon by name kusasura is awed in that manner and we are to get the immersed in that incident in which a pestle figures in an important way in the divine orchestration in our odyssey through this writing we are to see a town created by the lord himself submerged in the sea now and at that place a rare white object found nowhere else can be retrieved from the sea plentifully we are also to see about two other uncommon things and should be having darshan of the holy sources from which they emanate the visualizations of which cannot be had through any other portrayal in writing the genesis of plants in the soil is a natural phenomenon and so too the find of water below the ground level but clay germinating in a particular soil is something unique an information about that sacred substance used by the devout ones will be setting at rest several doubts that have been lingering in the religious circuit the controversial aspect regarding the method of application of a thing that stands out prominently on the person of shri raghavendra is answered appropriately setting at not all misgivings about the matter shri raghavendra is common to all gracing everyone in an unbiased manner and when we are propagating about about him he should be projected in proper light and not in a manner that would be demeaning his religious following we would be setting in this writing with pictorial depictions the precise manner of following certain religious practices intended to be of guidance to those who are disseminating wrong notions about those it's well known that the salagrama is a symbolic of sri man narayana and we have seen in part 6 about the gandaki river associated with that sacred object and have also had visualization of sri mukti narayana on the bank of that river in our pilgrimage to that holy place through the pages of that volume damodar kund is at an altitude of 5900 meters 19411 feet 
in the Himalayan ranges of Nepal and the wonderful spiritual experience arising out of a journey to that sacred place can be had through a perusal of the narratives relating to the expedition to those great heights contained here. Situated in the Mustang district of the northwestern part of Nepal, Damodar Kund is in the Himalayan heights, presenting nature's beauty at its best as created by the Almighty and we shall be having darshan of that holy spot at a close range in the chapters covering the dreadful journey to that place. We shall be seeing there the sacred object created by the Almighty that is worshipped as being symbolic of Him. A Brindavana crafted by Sri Raghavendra himself can be seen at a place even today and his mysterious deeds at that locale will truly be heartwarming to know about. It's the spot where Guru Bhakti at its best was in exhibition in the distant past. The Anjaneya Vigrahas installed by Sri Vyasaraja, the earlier avatara of Sri Raghavendra, invariably have a bell as an appendage to the tail. But a Hanuman Shila with five bells is a rarity and we are to explore in this writing about the place of its existence and the glory associated with that idol. For the installation of a Raghavendra Mrittika Brindavana, arrangements for securing the Mrittika from Mantralaya will have to be initiated at least six months in advance, such period extending to a maximum of one year in other instances. But in a rare case, the Mrittika for a place had started from Mantralaya about 25 years in advance and had travelled to several holy places before reaching its destination. It's an alluring place, a granary and one presenting nature's bounty in its entire splendour, the ambience of which will be conducive to those seeking liberation from the earthly bondages. How Panchamudras, as taught by Sri Madhvacharya, are to be applied is explained with pictorial illustrations, inter alia laying bare all the stipulations regarding the sporting of those religious marks. Sri Sumati Indra, in an episode relating to mudras, is astonished at seeing a lady devotee and the divine enlightenment that he had about her will be most absorbing to know about. There has been portrayal of many incidents in this serialized writing espousing the cause of women but in this volume the views of a woman have been strongly refuted and her imaginary polemic with Sri Raghavendra is exposed of its hollowness. The Mantralaya flood is an unexpected addition in this volume. What sort of harrowing vestiges the deluge has left behind and what the answers are for a number of questions that arise about that nature's fury are to be seen here in depth. The graphic description of the 36-hour ordeal of those caught in the flood will leave one with the impression of having gone through those horrible experiences oneself. Some suggestions have been given for examination by the Srimad and the government to prevent such floods in future, the implementation of which is an urgent necessity. Sri Vijayendra's demonstration of one of the 64 arts is an interesting episode that will leave us at the height of ecstasy. Turning the course of a river is against Shastras and the efforts of one who was in a group owing allegiance to dharmic ways of life and what followed his action towards that end will induce the readers to recount those to others. How Sri Raghavendra is to be worshipped and his Aradhana celebrated in the present day environment is laid bare in the terse answers given to the lady who has raised the issue about those aspects, emphatically bringing out in the relative explicitations, explications that Sri Guru Raja would certainly grace those praying to him with unflagging and soulful devotion. A person of the Purvashrama lineage of Sri Raghavendra, without proper understanding of things, 
had expressed his views about Sri Raghavendra's life and the books that have appeared in Tamil on the biography of the saint, which opinions, unfortunately, do not befit his status as one belonging to that illustrious bloodline. The true position about those have been placed on record in this writing for the benefit of the future generations. In yet another context, it has been brought out how the actions of such individuals should not prove to be a kind of obstacle. The predicament of a Pita Dibadi as to how he should reveal a truth known to him and his prayer to the Almighty about it will cause the readers to squirm in distress. The Sri Raghavendra may grace even more than what is prayed for, depending upon what we supplicate to him, and the depth of our devotion is set out in a felicitous incident that would serve as an exemplary. An incident related to Sir Thomas Munro at Tirumala exudes a flavour that is as real as the thing figuring in that episode. A person faces mortification in a king's court, but by the prowess of the Anjaneya installed by Sri Vyasaraja, he is raised in his status to the level of acquiring worldwide recognition and acclamation. The episode leaving in our mind an indelible impression of those happenings. Some evil-minded persons had planned to cause disruption during my elder daughter's marriage and the cry of anguish that I had raised to the Almighty and to Sri Guru Raja from the depths of my heart had indeed evoked a benign response and saved me then from the humiliation that I should have otherwise been subjected to. Just as Sri Raghavendra had started to a place in a Mritika Rupa many years in advance for the mammoth Granthalaya project too, he is getting things accomplished one after the other as devotee seva, infusing bhaktas to do advance bookings for their seva offerings. All good things should be done instantly and that way devotees participation in the Granthalaya project is called for without procrastination. We are to see a medley of various incidents and mysterious happenings and get acquainted with the new information throughout this work, as in the earlier volumes. Many places covered in this volume may not be easily accessible, but a mere reading about them in this writing will bestow the same punya or merit as having personally visited those sacred spots. In fact, I pray to Sri Guru Raja at every place I cover that he should grace devotees reading my work with the same benefits to accrue as by a visit to that place. Such a broad thinking will inspire others also to follow suit, which in turn will add to one's merits or punya. This message has been conveyed emphatically even in the earlier chapters. It may no doubt be difficult to cover the ashtamatas at the various places they were initially started at. Yet, they are shining to this day as places of supreme holiness. For that matter, Bhikshalaya and the Navabrindavana, considered earlier as places that cannot be reached easily, have now gained renown and are spreading their radiance around. It's my prayer that while going through this part 8, the deep-seated yearnings of devotees should get fulfilled, overcoming their distresses. With such submission to the Almighty and the Guru, I take everyone on an interesting journey through this work, which has to be read with utmost devotion and shared with others too for their benefit that will only add to our punya or merits.